join David and Ross as they become discombobulated in Dorset. From pixies to poltergeists, witches to woodrows, hear them explore the legends, folklore, and outright weirdness of their own county. This is Dark, dark Dorset. The podcast of weird Dorset. Is it recording? So we, we're going to actually record one now, yeah. rather than hanging out in our comfortable homes yeah. with all the technology links. We're going to sit here by the campfire and talk. Talk. Well, it sounds to me like I'm going to listen because ev- everything we've said so far today, you've been. I can say that on the. I'll yeah. save that for the podcast. So, but I can't remember what these <laughs> things were. So um, I'm Ross. In where are we? We're in. Southover Woods, yeah. we're at a campsite in Southover Woods, which is a really big woodland and lots of very small groups dotted around. You can't really see or hear many people. Groups of people, yeah. It's quite wild. It's lovely. Yeah, so we're wild camping. Um, so David's got his hammock um, hammocked up, lashed up to some, some trees, and I'm going to sleep by the fire underneath a um, parachute, which is um, up here. We are indoors. Sorry, we're near um, Toll Puddle, aren't we? Is that near Toll yeah. Puddle? Yeah, we're kind of in between where you live and where I live. Yeah. So By yeah, so the, I'm Ross, and that's David. And hi. Uh, if you haven't listened to the podcast before, <laughs> we don't normally do it outside. But so, I drove. I've never driven through Toll Puddle before. Yeah. There's a, a special tree there, is there? Because um, there was a. Oh, this is a te- yes. This is where the Toll Puddle martyrs. Yeah, I, yeah. Happened, and there's a. I think there's a tree. That What's special about the tree? A pass. Because when I drove past it, there was a man hugging it, oh. and and it looked like an old elm or something. So maybe that could be something we can do. We and need to we need to look this up on it, Wikipedia. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we haven't got any Wi-Fi here. But I don't know if that's an, if that's anything we should put forward with our remits. But why are we? Why what, are we here? Why are we dark darsetting in this wood? Well, um, well, it is dark, and we're in Darset. Yeah, it's about both of those nine both o'clock. those day boxes ticked. We have always wanted to um i think it's a mix isn't it we've always wanted to stay out late and see if we could see one of the big black cats that's yeah. um rumored to be sighted around dorset and i i know where we could go and we could bait some sites up but it's yeah. it's heathland and we always said we'd go in summertime but um i decided it would be nice to actually do it in a bit more comfort so we we've got this great campsite we've got a big fire pit with uh, some ironwork over the top so we can lower a kettle into the fire. Mm. We've got hammocks and bivy bags. And I think it's also quite nice because you made me do this podcast yeah. and I'm making you do this. Yeah. So this is very different to what you would normally do yeah. as my well, podcast yeah. is very different to what I usually do. And also my, um, my camping is normally in a massive tent big enough to drive a car into. <laughs> so but I've always wanted to sleep outside. But also, you said this is uh, there is some haunting. Yes. So um, when I checked in with Chloe, who's amazing, if it, if anyone wants to come here, do get in touch with Chloe. She's so friendly and helpful, um, and she walked me through the woods and, and showed me a few of the sites here. And uh, we were we were talking about hauntings and sightings, and there are two white dogs, two very big white dogs, like old medieval hunting dogs, mm-hmm. um, that are seen on the hill. Just a bit. We're kind of near the top of the hill, aren't we? Yeah. But um, they're very often seen up the top. They're always seen together, so it's that's a bit bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, you see one black cat or one white dog, etc. But they're, no, they're seen together, um, and they're not. No one, no one really sees them that closely. Yeah. Uh, but they're not missing. Yeah. They're, they've not escaped from somewhere. There's there's no you know reports of uh, pets gone missing. Um, did you see how long they've been sighted? Like how? No. Uh, if we see we'll, it, we we'll have to ask it. We should find out more tomorrow. If they've been around, I'm, yeah. I'll put my feet out near the fire. I, that I, I left her, and she was just going into her white, uh, to pick up her white dog costume. <laughs> oh, did you see? <laughs> uh, did you see him fourteen times? The um, that guy, that Japanese guy, who spent all that money to make himself a a dog costume. Yes, I did. Super realistic yes, dog costume. Yes. Yeah, that, like yeah. that could be him. The other nice thing about this campsite is that there is a, um, just about 20 metres behind you, there's a huge hole. Yes. Which looks like a badger set hole. So, yeah, so you might see a black and white animal sniffing around you when you wake up. Oh, I, my kids said that um, I might wake up with a badger sniffing mm-hmm. my face. Uh, as long as it's not David. Nope. 
I yeah. won't. If I get in the hammock, I won't be getting out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to. You know, I might have to film you getting into that. <laughs> it's quite high off the ground. Does it come down? Yeah, what lower? are you saying? My tiny little legs. Yeah, but like you, you could have to jump up it into that. Look, it does, doesn't it? When I when I first put it up, it was too low. When I got in it, yeah, my considerable weight, it was only centimeters above the ground. So I did. Do you remember when we our first ever thing we did when we went to look for the woodworks and we saw those two trees were yes. being bent over? Maybe yeah. someone put a, a um, hammock in them, maybe, yeah, and bent them over, bent them yeah. together that way. But um, so we're not near any wood woodworks infested woods. We're not. Oh, we're not too far. I suppose at one time all the woods would have joined up, wouldn't yeah. they? But there's no chance of a woodworks wandering so. through the woods. I don't think so. Okay. We'll, we'll have to knock on a tree later. Mm. See if anything knocks back. Sorry, it gets very smoky under here sometimes. No, it's good. I like it. I wonder if they can hear the fire crackling. This is where you play a fire sound effect over the top. If they can't hear it, they will hear the... uh, There were some um, owls um, screeching a minute ago, so hopefully they'll come back. Right, so (laughs) I've had some adventures while... Since the last one. So I've been to... uh, Went camping in Cornwall and Devon and Wiltshire. Yeah, so I went to, um, and I know, you know, this is a, Dar- a Dorset, Darset centric site, but let's so talk, you about can't the... talk about it. No, but I can talk about some of the things which <laughs> I did. Um, we um, we went to Boss Castle, and they got the um, Museum of uh, Magic and Wish- Witchcraft there, which is amazing. Really, should go um, check it out if you haven't been there before. What was the best bit? Uh, best bit. They got a huge collection of poppets. So there's a, there's a really good knitted really well done knitted female uh, army officer which has got a noose around its neck Ooh. and, they, and they, from the second world war they reckon that this person was a, a bit of a bully and someone had done that yeah. um, and they, they, there's this really cool one where at the back of a, an old filing cabinet they found this black and white picture of a, a woman with loads of pins <laughs> all stuck into it so that, that was good they had I'm going to show it to you they had Alistair Crowley's signature and he draws the A for Alistair as a, a big cock so so I that, thought that, that, that's that, that's why he became famous. Um, what else did they have? Loads of like ritual objects, um, like cats out which they found. Oh yeah, cats in lofts. In, uh, yeah, or in fireplaces and yeah. walls and stuff. Um, they had a, a cock rock, which is a big rock in the shape of a cock and balls. Um, was it natural or had someone carved it? Natural, natural cock rock. But it was used. <laughs> it was used in some kind of ritual. Lots of skeletons and. What was the worst bit? Worst bit was my kids just rushing. Are you going to say your kids? Yeah, rushing through <laughs> the whole thing. They always do this. They always go into the next room, and um, <laughs> so as soon as you go in there, they go to the next one, and you feel like you're rushing and you can't read anything because kids hate reading things in museums. No, but it's brilliant, and and we've got some really great posters and uh, and stuff from there. Nice. Uh, so you're a big good. fan of a poster, aren't you? I, uh, we've got way too many posters in our house. Um, and not enough wall space for them. We, um, but also the, the main event was I got to go to Stonehenge. So as a birthday present, my wife, Beck paid for us to get a, a stone experience where you actually get to go inside the, um, the stone circle. So you, rather than just walking around the edge, you can go in. They were very strict, not allowed to touch any of the stones yeah. or anything. Um, and one of the things just before you we went in there, they said, I've just got to say there was a printing error on the terms and conditions. You cannot get naked or start any fires. <laughs> just to say, to confirm that that, because it, on the terms and conditions it says you can, you cannot get naked and start a fire. But that was great. Where would where would you keep your, like, your matches? Yeah. Well, you, you start the fire, then get naked, I imagine, uh, okay. wouldn't you? So it was probably about 15 of us, and we got there. I bet not many people get to do that. Apart from the solstice, where yeah. everyone just goes in. And they were saying, like, there's got all these different, like, liking and stuff on all the um, on the stones. Yeah. They said, because it was recently the solstice, they're all, like, it's all rubbed off from a certain height up, because everyone's just, like... Oh, packed in. And yeah, and yeah. just, like, rubbing them and stuff. But there's about 15 of us go in. It was um, at quarter to five in the morning. So we saw the sun coming up and like, oh, like shining between the um, the stones and stuff. Yeah, it was great. There was a a group of well, there was a group of Americans. There's one guy uh, on the bus going up there. He had a Pokemon Go 
um, jacket on. <laughs> he was playing Pokemon Go in the bus going up to um, Stonehenge. He was playing Pokemon Go in the circle and then went back back on the end. So with no point did he not look at his phone and was playing Pokemon. And I was like, what? Wow. This is costing like over £100 per person to do this. Am I right in thinking that uh, Pokemon things spawn if you play Pokemon in new places? I don't know. Because we, we were camping on an island earlier this mm-hmm. week with a friend of mine and their kids and one of the kids was playing Pokemon um, for a little bit on a phone mm-hmm. and uh, yeah I, I asked a question about whether everyone, anyone had played on this secret island before mm-hmm. and, and I'm fairly sure he said that if you play in new places then things do start spawning there so maybe that was the guy who wanted Pokemon it would be the first go, person to get like a, a, a Stonehenge Pokemon this feels like you should have highway when you go running to... what's no highway hmm? what's no highway well, I suppose they would hide out in the woods, wouldn't they? Yeah. Like, highwaymen were, like, big when I was younger. It was like... What do you mean, big? Like, there was, like, carry-on jack with... Um, that was oh, always they in, weren't just, like, like extra ginormous. large? No, it was, um... Dick Turpin was on telly, wasn't he? Remember that one? No. Well, I remember Adam Ant made, like... <laughs> made, like, um... Was it a dandy... Stand hi- and deliver. Yeah, a dandy highwayman. But, yeah, I feel like... It's not. So, I bet if you ask the kid now what a highwayman, man, they won't be, won't be able to no. tell tell anyone about it. But yeah, Dick Turpin and all that stuff was quite big. It was it was on vogue when I was younger. Anyway, sorry. Yes, uh, it's getting very dark. I just saw a light through the woods there. That the wood roses carry torches. Well, I think it is quite a way away. Their, their penises glow in the dark <laughs> during a um, mating season. That's, um, I'm off then. That's <laughs> I'll, I'll be gone. That's what I've heard. Yeah, there's a light over there. Um, yeah, so earlier uh, tonight, I went and told a group of teenagers to turn their music <laughs> down. So David's <laughs> obsessed that they're going to come and try and kill us later on. They're not going uh, to kill you, not me. No, uh, well, you're, you're my compass. Yeah, but you're, you're making a habit of it now. You seem to, everywhere you go, you like to say, it's not social. Yeah, it's not. Anti- <laughs> so, yeah, it isn't social. Social is being absolutely it's silent. not natural. And not talking to anyone and making any noise. Yeah, the fact I went over to a big group of people having like fun together and tell them they're not being social because um, I am at the you top of the well. hill. You did well. Although yeah. you, did, you did admit you didn't see how many there were until you got round yeah. the corner. And they have turned the music down. Yeah. Um, and they, it remains down. Yeah, I think they might be... T- and you probably off. ruined their 17th birthday party. <laughs> yeah. They've gone home crying. Yeah, but so going into the, the um, Stonehenge... Yes. It was a very strange experience. It, I... I I said to Beck that I, I'm not spiritual, or I don't have any religion, or believe in any like really in magic or anything like that. But I said it's probably the closest thing I can explain. It was like meeting a famous person and being quite nervous because it's just, I feel like it's such a like a famous place. Yeah. That it just it was kind of like I just felt weird there. Yeah? And I kept thinking, am I going to cry? I feel like I might cry in a Did minute. you cry? No, I was like on the on You're the verge. No. Is it the smoke? It's the smoke. The smoke's getting in my eyes. And like walking through some of the the big, like, Saracen stones. Yes. I don't know if it was just the way the wind was or something. It felt like there was like a mm. sort of like mm. feeling. I felt like I was walking. Yeah, it, it was very. When strange. when we went to Knowlton, that felt very calm. Yeah didn't it and yeah. sacred almost it had a spiritual yeah. it felt different to anywhere else we'd recorded yeah. how, how did um the henge do i would say it was like that times a hundred it just wow. my my legs you know and this is gonna sound weird but my legs felt a little bit wobbly the whole time i was there but i think it was just because we've been somewhere we've always mm. wanted to go it's yeah. such a famous place um and we've been like it was like the end of our two-week holiday. That was, so it was always just us just waiting yeah, to go yeah. to this thing. So we made a big deal about it. Um, and I said to my daughter, uh, Talis, who's my youngest daughter, I said, one day, do you think you might bring your children to Stonehenge? Yes. <laughs> and she said, uh, no, because they'll be bored to death. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. But there, there was um, a, another group of Americans there who... Um, they took off their shoes, so they were walking yeah. barefoot, for, and they were like um, bowing down to the Ooh. to the stones. They um, they got themselves into a circle and anointed them, themselves with oil, and then and just, did you just laugh at them? Uh, it's, it's, each <laughs> of their own. 
but they would like um, must be quite off-putting when you're when you're trying to soak it all in yeah and he's just got this going on in the corner <laughs> um there was one um family who looked like they paid for their own like guide oh to sort of like show it all so we, there was like a, a um a guide for the the tour we was doing yes. but they had their own personal one but so i just linked onto them because he was like he was like the yeah. service where um, Christopher Wren had like carved his initials into the, one of the oh. stones and stuff and um, yeah it was really interesting so we were on a bit of a Stonehenge kick at the moment watching well, so I'd listened to a Stonehenge podcast the other week yeah. last week but I was thinking about this earlier when we were chatting the difference between you and me is you can listen to a podcast and remember everything about it <laughs> the difference between bees and wasps and mushrooms yeah, yeah. What? And I'll listen to a podcast and I'll fall asleep instantly and not remember anything. So it was a very good podcast about Stonehenge. Yeah. And I wish I could remember. Some wasn't of it. the Tony Robinson one, was it? There was a recent Tony Robinson no, one. No, although I good. did. I think the, there was a podcast I did where they were interviewing Tony Robinson mm. recently as well, but that was different. Well, it's a fantastic one on um, a documentary on iPlayer at the moment. And they were saying. So you got there's two different types of stone yes. uh, stonehenge. You've got the um, the big Saracen stones, yep. and they got the small they call them the blue the stones. Blue ones, they're yeah. about six or seven foot high, and those are those are older than the mm. um, the big Saracen stones. But the small these blue stones are the ones that come from Wales. Wales, well, yeah. And this guy on this documentary, this um, uh, archaeologist, mm. by analysing the stone, they worked out exactly which. They, they, they narrowed it down to like four or five outcrops of stone in, in Priscelli. And they were saying that the, the legend of, um, of uh, one of the legends about Stonehenge is that um, Merlin went to Ireland and transported the stone circle to, the, to there. Yes. Um, they said, Priscelli's not, it's, it's in West Wales, it's not in Ireland, but it's, it's that direction. It's on the so, way. Yeah, it's on the way there. But they were saying that... Um, and they finally found two places where the stones come from and they said you can see where they've been cut, cutting them out like what, some were like half done where they had, haven't quite finished putting that one out and stuff um, and they got the thing they said this is where you can see this is where they shaped them and everything mm. and uh, he had a, a theory that they that there was they'd put those stones in a circle so, so cut a long story short they found the holes where um, these uh, blue stones were in a a giant stone circle in West Wales yes. originally, and what yes. they reckon did is that, that that was there for a couple hundred years, and then those people decided to move down there, so they they t- t- took, took the stones out them. and took it with them, and they said there was even like they found like a, a hole which is a particular a weird shape, yeah, and then they found a stone the same shape, the same shape, exactly the same one, um, but they were saying so they like, found a hole in Wales and then the stone at it, Stonehenge. It, Stonehenge where the, it's been moved down there, and they were saying that. Stonehenge was originally like a really big um, one with the little with the blue stones as a circle. Yeah. And then after 500 years or so, they decided to bring them in and then put the big ones out. So they put so those they've been like moved like three yeah. or four times but yeah. where these stones were. It's really interesting. Um, so I've ruined. So don't you don't need to watch the documentary now. I've ruined that. I, th- I think I read about it on the BBC website mm. not long ago. But the discoveries in Wales. Yeah. Just putting another log on the fire. And it didn't go too well, but yeah. it's, it's, it's got very dark. Yeah, it's got very dark very quickly. Very mm. dark. Yeah. So have we got any other dark um oh, also in Cornwall went to a very good um air, um what's it called? Uh bird of, pre- bird of prey um sanctuary place. Yeah it, uh, a hawkery. Yeah, it's a falcon. Yeah. Falcon. What the falcon's was... nest. I don't know. Anyway, it was good, um, <laughs> but it was a, and like it's really weird um, theme park called Milky Way, like a space film, a space themed um, with birds of prey. With birds of prey there, um, and it was really tiny, um, and like some had like two roller coasters, but really like rickety old ones, <laughs> and. Dodgems, oh. but it was brilliant because it was so small. Hardly anyone was there, and we basically went on the dodgems about fifty times, and it was just because <laughs> there was no queues or anything. You just get on, get you just kept doing it, 
Um, they must have loved you going in yeah, there. Yeah, the kids loved it. But they also had a sci-fi exhibition where some guy's collection of um, Star Wars and Doctor Who memorabilia was too big for his house, so that <laughs> they let him put it in there. And they had some of the ropiest, like, mannequins, like, wearing like really bad Luke Skywalker outfits and stuff. It was hilarious. But I would say it was one of the best days of the holiday. <laughs> uh, so when you... Um, Told me about this place you sent me a picture of some dossiers of like paranormal investigations that happened here was that no that's not here that's at our local pub oh they had some paranormal investigators go in uh they went in one night for the initial investigation they went in a second night mm. to stay later and then they had a third night where members of the public could pay mm. to stay in the pub with the bar being shut which oh. didn't sound like fun to me um, and anything? there's a dossier in the pub that you can read. We should go for a beer and read it. Yeah? Yeah. Um, oh, well, maybe that could be our, our next episode. Yeah. So I've just I've got some crisps in here. There's some, some beer in there as well, isn't there? And beer, yeah. Right. Right, so I've got some rum in this hip bar. Should we have some rum? Yeah. Thank you. It's just like two fat guys go camping and eat their way through the podcast. You can't eat crisps on a podcast. No, you be can't too, really. No. Too much. Too noisy. What did I eat once on a podcast? Raspberries. I thought that was a nice quiet food <laughs> to eat. They're quite soft, aren't they? Yeah, I'll eat these crisps later. Lots of old people like raspberries, I believe. Because mm. they're easy to eat. So a, I was a, arguing with the kids. I said, when you're young... Rump. Thank you very much. I said, when you're a kid, you think strawberries are the, the best red fruit. But you... Um, oh, no, I'm with the raspberry. Yeah, but as you get older, it's ra- raspberry jam... It's so much faster, yes. superior to them. The only problem with raspberries is the little bits. They're not seeds, are they? They're something else. They stick in your teeth. The um, is it? The, so, so David's got um glow things hanging on these guy ropes. The one, the furthest one, was swinging around quite violently just then. That's probably because an animal moved it. Yeah, we'll stop doing it now. Um, I think it's just the wind, isn't it? Flap it away. Okay. I've got a tarp over uh-huh. the top. Which is a bit like a sail. Oh yeah, there it goes. Also, there's something hanging down in front of it, which makes it mm. look a bit odd. Ooh. It's good, isn't it? So oh. we're drinking. Um, we're not drinking very local beer. Not today. No. But the rum we have is made on the Isle of Wight, which okay. is kind of local. Is that just as local as you talking about foreign counties for your holiday? I know. I'm sorry. This is mermaid sp- uh, spice ginger rum, and it's. Delicious. We're having it neat because it's so yeah, smooth. It's nice. Hmm. What is it? I know why. What is that in Hampshire, Wiltshire? Is it? Is it Hampshire? Hampshire. I think. Or is it? it might be. It's or is own, it, or is it own county? It's, its own thing. Yeah. Because no one wants it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the. I think it is its own thing, and it might even be one of the smallest counties in the UK. That's a quiz question. I'm sure. Yeah. But and also probably. Completely Rutland. inaccurate. Yeah, I like to think all the things I, I say yeah. are totally inaccurate. I, this is when I realised how much of um, me doing a podcast is just having a Wikipedia article in front of me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how much stuff I have to like cut out of me looking stuff up and then reading it out. We should leave some food out. Right. Um, As an offering to them. Been, yeah, we've been quite tidy so far, haven't we? We've, had, um, we've been um, eating army rations for... Mm for supper um, partly because I had them already and partly because they're so easy mm. and we're quite lazy with our that was nice cooking apart um, from the pudding we should leave some food out to see if these big white dogs mm. come by yeah I should have brought an infrared camera I was going to say like a trail cam yeah well, it's easy for you to say that because you're all like up high whereas I'm, I'm down at dog munching height well that's where I'm going to put the food around yeah. you <laughs> well, I would be basically the, the food <laughs> you are the food mm. yeah mm. Ah. I should get my hip, part, hip flask out in a minute mm. alright do we have anything else with the podcast um, I think I'm going to quote Ian Beale Okay. And say, I've got nothing left. (laughs) (laughs) We we can always turn it back on. Yeah. Yeah. So this this reminds me of when I 
when uh, Paul and Kyle and I, we did six days to get across one of the, the large national parks in Canada. Okay, so you gave it even further. I gave it further. Than Dorset. And um, one night, one night, <laughs> uh, we, we all had one man tents and there was a particular little site on, it wasn't an island, it was, we were at the end of a peninsula on a, on a very long lake. And um, we couldn't get the tents near each other. So we were quite far apart. The fire pit was over one corner, mm. had some tents. The food was all hung in a tree. Um, and uh, my tent was, was on its own a little way off. And I heard something walk past my tent. Mm. And I don't think it was very big, but it's so quiet over there. But, you mm. know, I can hear the footsteps and the leaves going. Through. And I, so I just shouted at it. Yeah. I, I was fairly sure it wasn't about and then instantly Paul and Carl came running out their tents just in their box shorts with torches and bear spray shouting and mm -hmm. someone you know many miles away the other other side of the lake would have heard our whistles and shouts and they let off a bear banger yeah. to, to help and then Paul ran Paul was running along the beach um, and tripped over and let off a bear spray <laughs> <laughs> and covered himself I love, I love the phrase bear banger <laughs> Yeah, just like a big firework, I mm. think. Every so often we hear like a shouting or a screaming. I think it's the party. But, I don't know, why... It does have further away, doesn't it? Yeah, it does sit further away, because when I went there, they weren't like dancing around and stuff, they no. were just like sitting around chatting. Well, there's no... Um, it's not best of all, because that was a couple of weeks ago. Mm. Um, there's the Purbeck Rally, but that's in Ware, and we wouldn't hear that from here. Having said that, I've been camping in, I've been hammocking um, somewhere I can't tell you, mm. and we have heard the illegal rave that happens over Easter, and that was like 20 miles away. Really? Yeah. So you just go out and sleep in the woods in the hammock on your own? Yeah. Well, not on my own, uh, like with a friend. Oh, okay. Well, not in that way. With a friend. <laughs> <laughs> with my, yeah, invisible I'm, hammock. I'm, I'm going hammocking. Yeah. yeah. We've got a lot of logs to get through. Mm. Which is nice. You said there's a, a poo toilet here, yeah? Yeah. I don't need one yet. I'm just... <laughs> It's up there in the dark. Okay. The nice thing, so the nice thing about it is you could sit on that and not worry about the bears coming at you from the woods. Mm. It's got a little hut thing as well, so no one. Had, but no you said it's like it. a long drop one. Yeah. 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 It was, yeah. I've, I've been on those before. It's just a little bit unnerving having your bare bottom above a very deep hole full of shit. It's not because. It's a long, it's a long way down. Yeah, but you don't want that break, that wood to break. A friend of mine was telling me a couple of weeks ago they went to these long drop toilet in Vietnam, and um, when they when they opened, they lifted the seat up, they saw the pig's face looking up at them, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for its dinner. <laughs> so it could be worse. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Ooh. In Canada, like again, we we'd have. They'd be like 100 metres off into the bush somewhere in a little toilet like that. Yeah. A thunderbox, you just lift the lid up, sit your ass on it, and and hope no bears are watching you. <laughs> Kyle even swam out into the lake one night what to have a poo because he was too scared a, to go a, up there. A poo, uh, a poo bear. Poos float though, most of the time. I don't want to... I don't think I've ever... Yeah. Have you ever done a swimming poo? No, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I could. <laughs> this, quite hard though, this is not an experiment we need to do yeah. for this podcast. But it's like treading water and pooing at the same time. I know, multitasking. Yeah. Huh? Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, if you could like um, tweet us at, at Dark Darset <laughs> or X us at Dark Darset, have you ever done a poo <laughs> while submerged in water? Yeah. I don't. I don't want those people to listen to us. <laughs> I remember, um, uh, like, I had a girlfriend when I was at, <laughs> um, at uh, Christian, like, uh, Christian, what do you call it? Um, Church? Social club. Um, so it wasn't really a girlfriend. Then it was just like, will you go out with Sally? Okay. And that was it. Um, so she was mortified <laughs> when her um, brother told me that when she was little, she did a shit in the bath. 
Yeah. Yeah. Poor Sam. I'll probably cut that whole hole. That's in the good. Bar. That's good. Yeah. Wait. Have we got another camera? Right. I've ruined that fire like, just by doing it. Is that the end of that? Oh, oh, honey. Yeah, I think we stopped. Oh shit. What was that? Oh, it's my um. What's the big. Oh shit. Up. What are you doing now? It's a big spider. Right. Where? I was walking across the um. Was there? Yeah. Shit, I don't like spiders. Go on now. Um. Alright. That is an unusual episode of Dark Darset. Yeah. Until next time. It's not natural. It's not natural. Um, happy day. Bye bye. <laughs> happy day. If you know of any weirdness you'd like to share with Dave and Ross, you can tell them by email at darkdarsa at gmail.com or talk to them on Twitter at darkdarsa. Well, until next time, stay discombobulated. Stay discombobulated.